Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it would seem the discourse is discoursing. I went on the internet the other day to uh, see some people really having a strong, impassioned back and forth about one of the most beloved albums on the internet that would be Have a Nice Life's Death Consciousness, which interestingly enough, despite no promo, despite it being uh, really just a strange Connecticut home recorded obscurity really even to this day as there have been tracks on this album that strangely enough have gone viral on tiktok of all places it seems uh, no matter what decade or paradigm that we are in uh some dark depressed terminally online demographic of young teenagers and college kids stumble across this record and they essentially make it their life which is totally and completely fine because it, it's a great album maybe one that i think people obsess over a, a bit too hard at times but uh look it's uh incredibly creative and its staying power is undeniable part of what makes this record so interesting and creative is that it encompasses so many different influences and aesthetics and genres. Uh, this album is most definitely not one singular thing. If you decide to give it a listen for yourself, you are going to be in for a wild and varied ride. Let me guarantee you that. Uh, but this tweet over here about the album uh, grabbed my attention as uh, it also did with thousands of other people. And here it goes in response to somebody making some stupid, silly ratio post. Uh, saying it's one of the greatest shoegaze albums of all time. Uh, this person says, literally was never considered shoegaze until the Zoomers uh, discovered Rate Your Music. Doomgaze also isn't a real genre either, by the way. Uh, this is a post-punk album, which uh, is a very funny post. Could potentially be bait. I'm not entirely sure of the poster's intentions, but what does seem to be clear is that uh, this post generated some action actual, real, genuine discourse and debate about what the hell this album even really truly is. And it's funny that uh, even to this day, uh, it still kind of confuses people. Now, off the bat, before I sort of like, you know, throw my own opinion into this, I will um, explain why this tweet here is factually incorrect, because regardless of what this album arguably is genre-wise, uh, for quite a long time, it has been considered in at least some respects to be shoegaze or shoegaze adjacent. And this is before the Zoomers or whatever the hell you're talking about. Because honestly, I remember a time where the bulk of discourse around this record was happening on 4chan of all places on the goddamn music board, which believe me was not as insane a place to be as it sounds uh, prior to most inclusive and frankly superior music discourse uh, moved on over to play Places like social media and Reddit and so on and so forth. While I know that saying superior music discourse and Reddit in the same sentence sounds like kind of an oxymoron, but I stand by it. But still, even during that time, this album was still very much considered uh, to be in the shoegaze lane. I mean, we're also talking about a board here that was just unapologetically obsessed uh, with fucking albums like Loveless as well. But also on top of it, saying this album couldn't possibly be shoegaze in in any way whatsoever, I feel like is uh, just like a profound misunderstanding of the genre or just maybe as a result of a very narrow view of it. Believe it or not, Shoegaze is not uh, basically any album that came out of the 90s and sounds exactly like My Bloody Valentine or Slow Dive. In fact, Shoegaze's main characteristics are actually kind of broad and abstract, which can't be surprising considering it's a genre that... Uh, for the most part, sounds like... <laughs> I mean, if you will allow me to quote from the book of Wikipedia, the genre roughly combines ethereal swirling vocals with layers of distorted bent or flange guitars, creating a wash of sound where no instrument is distinguishable from another. By that metric, I think there are multiple tracks off of Death Consciousness that you could argue like fit the bill, be that the opening track or the progressive builds of songs like Blood Hail. Let's not also 
forget to mention the giant blaring feedback laced guitar riffs on There Is No Food. You can't tell me that that is like absolutely not shoegaze related at all. And while it is true, you could say that songs such as I Don't Love, yeah, it's a post-punk song, but just simply calling it that, I think is kind of a lie by omission, which is why when you go on the Rate Your Music page for this album, uh, there are so many goddamn genre tags under it. Because the fact of the matter is, there are albums that are inspired by lots of different genres. Some records are inspired by maybe just a few or uh, operate very uh, narrowly within one or two genres max. Other albums just bring in a whole lot. But still, with that being said, I, I understand why somebody would maybe look at some shoegaze classics from the 90s and then uh, have a hard time kind of putting death consciousness in the same lane as those records because musically and aesthetically and even emotionally, they are such different experiences. I mean, while our poster here is most definitely correct in assessing that this is a post-punk album, even post-punk, which is a genre that personally I love, a genre tag that I have enjoyed many an album in, even post-punk is a very kind of weird and ill-defined genre term that mostly represents uh, more of an era of music or a movement within music than it does a super specific sound. We're talking about a genre here uh, that uh, includes bands not only like Para Ubu and Sonic Youth uh, and tons of no-wave acts, but also Devo and Talking Heads. So many gothic rock bands as well. And if you are going to try to get super specific genre-wise with Death Consciousness, I think gothic rock is actually maybe the most accurate descriptor, but even simply labeling it that doesn't tell you the whole story of the album's sound and context, as the record is, yes, most definitely a culmination of its influences. But the reason it appears at the time that it does and sounds the way it does is most definitely due to a lot of prevailing trends and recording techniques in the mid and late 2000s that saw artists uh, being able to create music at home home with a lot more ease due to more widely available digital audio workstations that allowed them to experiment with effects and volume a lot more wildly, not to mention tons and tons and tons of multi-tracks. It's no surprise that an album like this was also coincided by a new era of lo-fi indie that sounded completely different from the eras of lo-fi that arose in the past in the late 80s and the 90s, where the DIY recordings of various bands that sort of made a name for themselves in that lane, in that scene, were a lot drier, a lot more distorted, a lot messier. I mean, one other kind of major aesthetic influence on this album that I feel like is often left out of this discourse is black metal. And as long as I'm complaining, the doom gaze comment on this tweet is also kind of annoying as combinations of shoegaze and doom metal do provably exist. Have we not heard a single Yesu album? Give me a break. Anyway, with all that being said, uh, yes, Death Consciousness is uh, most definitely a shoegaze or shoegaze adjacent album. Your record doesn't need to sound like Loveless in order for the parallels to be there. And at the end of the day, I feel like this conversation just kind of like displays how little understanding and agreement there is among music fans as to what many of these genre terms mean and just all of the shortcomings of these genre terms to when it actually comes to describing the concrete elements of various styles of music, because as I said earlier, uh, some genre terms uh, basically describe very abstract and notional aesthetic elements uh, that are very trippy and surreal and difficult to put into very specific words, while other genre terms have uh, much more concrete descriptions and characteristics in terms of like their musical compositional makeup. And then in in addition to that, some genre terms don't even describe a sound at all, but more a block of music that was made during a certain era or period in time or took on uh, a somewhat specific set of influences. And yeah, while this makes for a very messy web of shit to work through as, as far as music discourse goes, getting through it isn't an 
impossible task. And I think we should just like approach these conversations, uh, understanding that, you know, the, the terms that we're using are flawed inherently. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no fucking Bible saying like specifically what shoegaze is or isn't, or what it has to be or what it can't possibly be. I'm not advocating for these terms to mean nothing, but, uh, you know, sometimes they don't mean much or the meanings they do have can evolve into very different things when you're talking about a certain genre or style of music lasting beyond one or two or even three decades. When you've got that kind of lasting power, of course, the records and the artists that are creating within that style by the third decade are not going to sound the fucking same as the ones who are doing it in the first or, you know, just at the very start. So that's my rant. Let me know what you think about all of this. I'm sure you will in the comments. Love you. You're the best. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, shoegaze forever.